My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith which is given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Pain and suffering, disappointment and stress, failure and discomfort. These are the conditions of our lives. These are the conditions that Satan would have us reside in. Our own failures, our own desires for things that God is not ready to either give or deliver, the things that we fail to accomplish, the difficulty that we either cause or are in the middle of, are all the things that Satan would have us focus upon. In fact, on this celebration of the Reformation, we have that great gospel text that points out to us that a man is justified by God's grace alone, irrespective of the works of his hands. And I tell you the truth, that that is so contrary to what this world both teaches and lives. All you have to do is go to a funeral home to see that. And I don't care who the person is that you're there to visit. You will likely hear the same thing. So-and-so was a great person, a good person, right? We spend all of our waking time as children of this earth worrying about the things that we do. So when it comes to our faith relationship, not only is it natural and normal for Satan to use that as a temptation for us to feel like in some way we're doing things that will gain God's favor or give us a special place. He uses it in our own lives to create doubt that that free gift of God through his son Jesus Christ on the cross is just not enough. In fact, even great, devout, long-standing Christian people at the very hour of their death ask the question, have I done enough? Again, I will say to you, it is normal and natural. It is a part of what Satan would do to us to cause us to turn away from that great good news of Jesus Christ. You know, the truth of the gospel for us is the truth of the gospel for all people, whether they believe or they don't. The word of God is true today as it was at the very time that it was spoken and written as we hear this day in the epistle lesson. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. And I'll get back to that because there's a significant piece there that we can't ignore. Therefore is no difference. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. My friends, there's this picture out there whenever something bad happens and a a servant of the church is attached to it, whether it's a pastor or a church worker, whether it's embezzlement or or sexual misconduct, there's always this idea that because church workers are church workers, that their lives and their sins are any different than yours. That when they get caught in the same sin you get caught in, in some way it's absolutely more dramatic than it is if you were to get caught in the same sin. And yet the opposite is exactly what the Bible is not saying. In fact, the Bible is saying all of us fall short of the glory of God. All of us are in need of his love. All of us are under that gift of grace that God has given through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And more than that, it says clearly that your good works aren't on your own accord. They come as a gift of the Holy Spirit, a byproduct, let's say, of faith. A gift from Jesus Christ. You know, that is one of the good news portions for any celebration of the Reformation that you and all people should take away. That the gift that God gives you is faith. And out of that faith flows the ability in the power of the Holy Spirit to do the things that are seen as good, as righteous, and as holy in God's sight. 
For I have to tell you, I know many of you very well, I highly doubt on your own accord that you would want to and or have the capacity to just be as nice as you are and as good as you are without a little bit of help. You know, they say things like this, a good meal is good, but it might need just a little bit of salt. Or that pie was delicious, but you could have added just a little bit more sugar. Well, I tell you the truth, for us in the kingdom of God, those ingredients are all given to us by the Holy Spirit. I mean, there is no greater example than Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who in the face of every temptation turned away. In the face of every criticism stood his ground. Now you, like me occasionally, might try to use some of those biblical examples like Jesus turning the tables over in the temple, the anger that he had for people turning God's house into a house of robbery and thievery. Turned the tables over, took his belt out, and started whipping them, right? You probably envision that in a very kind way. You probably envision that in a very loving way. Oh, please, go. No, it says he turned the tables over and he drove them out by his whip. Because they were turning God's house into a place of thievery and into a place of money changing. Our Lord and Savior stood in the face of the temptation there on the cross in the midst of the work of salvation. When people said things to him, if you really are the Son of God, how about you use some of those magical baby Jesus powers? You know, those ones that you use to change water into wine. You know, those same powers you use to tell Lazarus to get up. When he was dead and come out, how about you use some of those powers? And I don't know about you, but you know the first thing I would think about is something spectacular. Kind of like a 4th of July firework blowing up right in their face. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus instead called to his father and asked his father to forgive them. The example of forgiveness and love and compassion that we all aspire to was shown to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. An example that was given both in life, but also in death. An example that in resurrection gives us the ability and the assurance to know that for now and for always, the forgiveness of our sins was won for us on a cross, shed for us by blood, and taken to heaven in the ascension of our Lord. It doesn't matter what you do. The gift of faith covers you, envelops you, and empowers you to live a life knowing that God is in charge. Today in Bible class, we read from Psalm 121, a great psalm. Look it up. A great psalm that reminds us that our hope is in the Lord. It is in the Lord who does all things in spite of us. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe this wholeheartedly. You know, we love to talk about what God does through us, right? The gifts that he gives, the stewardship that we use of time, of talents, and of treasures. But I like to say this. God does great things in spite of me, without me. And even when I'm out there messing up, he still finds a way to get his gospel message out to people. I said in Bible class today, too, and I want to reiterate for you this day, the gift of freedom in the gospel, the gift of salvation by grace through faith, the great solos, solas of the scriptures that Luther highlighted for us, grace alone, faith alone, through the scriptures alone, is a free gift. What free gift that you've ever been given did you not try to promote to other people? What free gift that you were given did you not want to tell somebody about? You know, look what I got. I got it free. Why is it? that you don't feel the same thing about your faith life and your worship life with the Lord? Why is it that the free gift of salvation, which doesn't get you anywhere by your works, that's one for you on the cross, that you receive in Holy Communion through the body and blood of Christ, is not a free gift that you want to share with everybody? Why are we so afraid to ask people if they have a relationship with that great Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has freed us from the chains of bondage to sin? Why is it that we find it so difficult to invite people to come in and and worship the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive the gifts of salvation and forgiveness that can only come through that man, that Savior, that Lord? You're quick to tell everybody else about the free things you get in life, 
but you spend so much time worrying about how they're going to receive you when you talk about your faith. I encourage you, my friends, to stand firm. You know, the one thing about Luther that I think any of us who have grown up Lutheran our whole lives, at least I'll speak for myself and not for you, but this celebration of the Reformation is always that thing that just gives me that charge of, of excitement and joy to know that this faith that God has placed me in, that he has called me by the gospel, not only is a true faith, but it is a faith that is articulated in God's word time and time again. And that great picture of God's forgiveness being free, without charge, without payment, no matter what I do and in spite of what I do, through confession and contrition, God gives us forgiveness. By the power of Jesus Christ, death on the cross, there is not a sin that you cannot have forgiven by God. Now, I tell you, Paul reminds us, that doesn't give you carte blanche to just go out and do crazy stuff, right? I mean, most Lutherans take the approach, I'm forgiven, so I can do or not do whatever it is I want. But that's not what the text is saying. And I love the last part of the gospel lesson. So if the Son sets you free... You are free indeed. Why is that so hard to believe? You know, it's easy for people to believe that the things they do, the good works they do, matter. Why is it so hard to believe that if the Son sets you free, that is Jesus Christ, you are free, and you are free indeed? I tell you the truth this day. That that text, that gospel message is one that should empower you, excite you, invigorate you, and lift you up. The Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has set you free. Satan has no dominion over you. He has no power over you. He has set you free. You are free indeed. Let that be your Reformation joy today, now and always. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. May God the Father who has given us the great gift of his Son, may God the Son who gives us the great gift of his life and death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you now and forevermore. Amen.